gender equality must be mainstreamed in all aspects of implementation of this agenda. For the first time, an international agenda has recognized the unpaid care work carried out by women and girls, like caring, cooking, fetching water and fuel wood. Unpaid care work is unrecognized and undervalued in policy and legislation. The fact is, it restricts women's participation in social and economic life and keeps them trapped in the cycle of poverty. It does talk about the importance of public services. So I'm thinking of, you know, the, uh, child care services, early child care, uh, but also schools and health services. If there are no health services, it's often women who become the default caretakers. The target also ta talks about infrastructure, which means water, energy, roads. What does all this mean for India? How is it going to be translated from the global intergovernment agreement to the national level? Let's look at what are the programs the government of India has to translate each aspect of, say, goal five into a real change on the ground. So you, we look at those schemes and programs, including Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao, the STEP scheme, the Swadhar scheme, and all these other schemes for uh, women's education, girls' education, adolescent girls' education, uh, and uh, skills development, uh, uh, access to economic uh, assets and resources, uh, you know, governance-related empowerment. So all of that then needs to be really pursued with a new vigor, new political will and investment. Analysts express worry over the decline in the quantum of allocations for women in the union budget this year and the halving of allocations for the Ministry for Women and Child Development. The cuts follow the report of the 14th Finance Commission, which increased the proportion of funds to be transferred to the states by the centre. There is now greater onus on the states to prioritise these issues. However, there is no transition plan. And poorer states which have competing priorities do not give the required focus to social sectors. Chronic underinvestment affects legislation, institutions and programs in achieving the goal of gender equality. Take the case of the Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act, which was enacted a decade ago. There is limited reach of the law in the absence of adequate mechanisms and the lack of financial resources. In the capital, we meet four survivors of violence. All are in their 20s. They were forced to leave the marital home after physical and emotional abuse. The survivors required intensive counselling, shelter, health services and financial support. But these continue to be difficult to access. Assistance came slowly from collectives formed under the Awaz Uthao or Breaking the Silence Initiative implemented by NGOs and 50 gender resource centres. Awaz Uthao was launched by the previous Delhi government four years ago. Three of the survivors are now receiving legal aid. In Hashvihar, another part of the capital, Awaz Uthao helped teenagers who felt unsafe when they walked to school or work. The group approached the local police station and found a proactive SHO. A value chain of preventive law enforcement was developed. Patrolling was increased in trouble spots.
the SHO regularly organizes martial arts training for girls. However, the program overall is fragmented as it lacks a mechanism for coordination between different entities like the police, courts, doctors, counselors and shelters. At best, it is an informal attempt at damage control. It is neither comprehensive nor institutionalized. Though there is no enforcement mechanism built into the 2030 agenda, national aspirations are growing. The government will need to respond to them with greater ambition. Despite the cynicism, the global agenda will be a political pressure point on national governments, a positive benchmark for the national development mission. At New York, India made a strong demand for reforms in global governance. In this direction, our institutions, approaches, and often mindsets reflect the wisdom of the century we have left behind, not the century we live in. As India pushes for a global role and a seat on the United Nations Security Council, the national development agenda is bound to change. It can no longer be business as usual, finance as usual.